So this is not the video I was planning on filming today. I thought I was gonna sit down and finally do that Bride of Boogity video I've been trying to do for like a month. And then, as I braced myself for impact and read the news, I saw a news story that is by far the least pressing thing in the news right now, but also just kind of a weird thing uh, that I read, and that was that uh, Chuck E. Cheese has filed for bankruptcy. In reading that article, because I'm me, I fell down the rabbit hole and ended up watching a bunch of old Chuck E. Cheese training videos from the late 80s or early 90s, I'm not exactly sure when. And um, they're eating at my soul, they're so weird. So I, I decided that I was going to make this video now and make the Bride of Boogity one next. And surely other people probably have made videos about this before. Like, I can't be the only person that knows about this, right? Right? But I just had to talk about them because it's just so good. So let's jump right in. This is a Chuck E. Cheese's University production. Let the entertainment begin. Companies need to attain customer satisfaction. Well, we think the reason we meet our service goals... Look at those poor parents that got roped into being part of this training video. They look like absolutely none of the parenting books warned them about Chuck E. Cheese. You know, in 1977, we opened the first Chuck E. Cheese, then named Pizza Time Theater, in San Jose, California. A man by the name of Nolan Bushnell came up with a revolutionary idea to integrate technical advances in entertainment into a restaurant. Gotta love that sound engineering. In 1980, Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz Pizza were two different companies, often opening stores within miles of each other. Later, in 1985, Dick Frank joined the company as president, and by 1988, Showbiz had spun off from the parent company. Do you think there was like a company history like quiz, like a pop quiz at the end of the orientation, and if you didn't pass, you like got stuck with like the worst of the jobs you could have there at the company? All right, guys, thank you for watching our orientation video. Uh, there will be a pop quiz, and whoever scores the lowest has the job of picking out uh, pizza slices out of the trash can and uh, trying to upsell them to tired parents. That's the job I wanted. It's the whole reason I started working here. Guess I don't even need to pass. Sweet. By the early 1990s, we will break the 300 unit barrier with no end in sight. Wow, it sounds like the 90s are going to be really great for Chuck E. Cheese. I can't wait for that to happen. And stay for the fun. Good lord, is Chuck E. trying to kill that kid? <laughs> I don't think that's something you should be showing in the training video. Six million four hundred thousand pounds of cheese are served each year. We also serve five hundred thousand gallons of soft drinks a year as well. What a weird way to break down success as a company. We contribute to so many cases of diabetes and high cholesterol every year and it's thanks to employees just like you. Chuck E. Cheese is where a kid can be a kid. Yes, Chuck E. Cheese, where a kid can be a kid and learn all the wonders of gambling addiction at the early age of three and a half. Of course, Chuck E. Cheese is the star of our show. Ugh. Appear to talk and sing with movements synchronized to musical segments. Ugh. While their cartoon counterparts dance and sing on the video screen. So first of all, those are terrifying. Nobody needs to be told that. Second of all, that's not an animation. I don't think they know what animation means. We also want the room safe. So, tuck in all the cords. If you see an electrical hazard, just kick it back under the table. No one will notice. When preparing the game room before opening, use your head. Carefully wipe down all the rides and games. God, this whole thing's hitting kind of hard in the post-COVID-19 world. You know what I mean? Now that that's done, Make sure you balance the skee-ball machines. Each machine must have a consistent number of 10 to 12 balls. Is that a consistent number? Wouldn't a consistent number be that every set gets 10 or 12 balls? If the number of skee-balls vary, isn't that the definition of inconsistency? Coaching, positive comments, and contests all add to the experience. Remember, if you are having fun, our guests will, too. You know, if you're paying a bunch of people minimum wage to chase around kids and 
disinfect skee-ball machines and make very bad pizza. I don't think it's fair to ask them to have fun while they're doing it. A very important job in the game room is supervising the ball crawl. Think of some fun games for the kids in the ball crawl. And here are some suggestions. Ask questions like, what color balls do I have in my hand? Okay, I would like to make a counter suggestion. Don't do that. Sweep and vacuum the floor. This poor guy just sweeping a floor that's carpet and has nothing on it. The broom isn't even really touching the ground, I don't think. Our costumes are extremely important to our image, not to mention expensive. God, there's something so terrifying about just like the lifeless bodies with their detached heads just hanging there in the closet next to a bunch of paper cups. To clean Chucky, 409 or similar cleaners should be used on the face, hat, and toes. To care for these items, machine wash separately in cold water. So what I'm learning is that the people that played the characters had way more responsibility than I ever realized. So hats off to you guys if anybody out there had that job. You will need to bring a few items from home such as running shorts because the costumes get extremely warm, socks which will prevent your feet from being irritated by the costume, and a headband will also help cushion your head and keep sweat from running into your eyes. I don't like the way it says, make sure to cushion your head. Like, what's gonna happen to my head in that suit? God, I just feel so bad for the employees that like, were sitting there, you know they were all sitting in a room watching this training video and realizing that they were not at all prepared for what they just got themselves into. Welcome to Chuck E. Cheese, I'm so glad you're gonna be working for us. Oh yeah, thanks, it's figured it'd be a great summer job, like, you know, I get some extra cash, and here's your suit. Okay, cool, so I just, I just put it on, or like, now one ev out of every, like, five of these suits has flesh-eating bacteria on it, so make sure that you clean it very thoroughly. You said flesh-eating bacteria. Oh yeah, there's tiny little knives in the suit, we put them in there to make sure that the suit stays in place. You mean knives as in, like, code for squishy comfortable. If the suit does puncture you, we don't cover medical expenses or anything like that, but we do have some kick-ass dental. Well, I am a fan of dental. One of Chucky's major roles comes during the birthday party, the parade of cakes. Since this part is so important, you might want to do a rehearsal on the floor before the store opens to get your bearings with a costume. Ask managers and employees if they have time to participate. That way, everyone will feel prepared. So not only do you have to plan your own routine if you're playing Chucky, but then you have to set up your own rehearsals for the thing that's supposed to be the most important part of like their whole, like the central focus of the business. Like wouldn't that be more of like a manager's job to like plan out times for everybody to rehearse? You're gonna make the person that's gonna have to do all the physical work involved in performing in a really uncomfortable suit, go and beg his co-workers to help practice so that he doesn't screw up and get fired? What kind of plan of action is that, Chuck E. Cheese? If you're ever in trouble, use the timeout signal and determine whether or not you will be able to make it to the regular exit door. That sounds so sinister when you put it that way. It sounds like, like I, I know they're probably just saying like, you know, if there's any kind of medical emergency while you're in the suit, this is a good system to have for your own safety, but like it makes it sound the way that he says it like it happens all the time. Like it has something to do with the suit, you know what I mean? I'm so sorry if you ever had to play Chuck E. Cheese. Always keep the safety of the children in mind, but most of all, have fun. <laughs> Make sure to be safe, but also fuck safety, have fun, that's more important. As a costume character, you are helping people laugh and create that magical ambience. It's a big and important responsibility. You can't let the charm of the costume carry itself. You must put your heart and soul into it, right? Yes, put your heart and soul into it, like I'm putting my heart and soul into this performance that I'm giving for this training video. Hey, guess what? We're having a birthday party. I'm so excited. Since each Chuck E. Cheese's hosts up to eight parties per wave every other hour, you must take special care in placing the reservations in the birthday book. Good lord, that's so many birthdays. I just, I feel more and more sympathetic to anybody out there who's ever worked at Chuck E. Cheese the more I watch these training videos. Happy birthday to you! Right, 
<laughs> Those poor kids look so scared. This one kid in the front looks like, man, if this is what a birthday is, I don't want one. Once again, remember to bus your tables throughout the party. Free bus, free bus, free bus. So I should bus after? I should I should bus in a in a post party manner, right? After. After. Pre bus. Oh, pre bus. Now I get it. Helen, great job. You ready for the next party? Sure. Companies even suggesting through their own mascot that birthday parties are hell at Chuck E. Cheese. When delivering an order, always interact with a guest and let them know you are glad they're here at Chuck E. Cheese's. They just feel the need to include in training the notion of talking to somebody while you're waiting their table. I feel like I feel like a lot of this stuff people generally just kind of know. I don't really think anybody's going to think to just bring a pizza to a table and just kind of not make eye contact, stare off into the distance and just kind of drop the pizza down. Make coffee and iced tea with one bag per gallon just prior to opening. One bag per gallon? It's, it's a big bag. I guess we'll let that one slide. <laughs> what was that? Kitchen General is not only important to ensure cleanliness and sanitation, but employee safety as well. You're not going to help him up? Help him up. Okay, that's going to be one large pepperoni pizza, two child drinks, two medium drinks, and one all-you-can-eat salad. Would you like anything else to go with that? No, thank you. I like that they felt the need to shake the camera. And here is one of your most important tasks. Suggestive salad. What did they say? Suggestive salad? <laughs> no, you know, I don't want to know. We're just going to keep moving on. Hello, we're making magic here at Chuck E. Cheese's. How may I help you? I do not trust that clown in the background. Now we get to my favorite part of the training videos. Pasquale's School of Pizza. <laughs> Buongiorno, everybody. Welcome to Pasquale's Kitchen. I'm Pasquale. I just want to say, if you're Italian, I'm so sorry. I know I had nothing to do with the making of this, but I'm still sorry for some reason. I'm so excited about my new pizza, though. Ooh, it's so nice and crispy and crunchy and tastes so fun. Did he say it tastes fun? How does something taste fun? I'm so confused. Oh, did he say it tastes fine? But like, wouldn't that be funny if like you were out at a restaurant and it was just like, hey, can you tell me about the breadsticks? What are those like? Oh, the breadsticks are great. They're super fun. You said fun? Oh yeah, they're a laugh riot. You can play a game with them. There's a coloring page on the back. I think I'll just have a salad. So pay close attention and I'll teach you all about how to make not just any pizza, but a showbiz pizza time pizza. A couple of my friends here are gonna help me out. Gus Johnson, is that you? <laughs> what do you think it was like? Walk into your first day, it's training day. They can't just tell you how to just make a pizza. They have to like sit you down and play you this video with like a knockoff Mario brother <laughs> teaching you how to make their shitty pizza. What was that like? If anybody out there, did anybody, like, does anybody know anybody who watched these videos, that had to watch these training videos? Like, I wonder how long they were used. Like, if you or anybody you know had to watch these training videos when they worked at Chuck E. Cheese, please, please show this to them and then have them contact me, because I have to know. Oh, by the way, you know what calzone means in Italian? Oh no, what does it mean? It's a neat little story. Maybe I'll tell you later. Oh, okay. But don't cover up those buns yet. You gotta let the buns cool down to 42 degrees before you can cover them. Otherwise, your buns are gonna grow too big too fast. They have to know, right? They have to know how suggestive some of these things sound, right? If the crusts are not the right size coming out of the roller, you're going to have a lot more trouble and take a lot more time panning those guys. The flashing text on the screen just seems like a little bit more than what you need to drive the point home, right? Hey, look at me. Look into my eyes. If I see you make one single crust that looks that bad, I will fuck you up. Unacceptable crusts. Then place the crust on a screen with the dry side up and shape it into a perfect circle. Also, should I be concerned that 
in nowhere in any of these training videos does it tell people who are handling food to wear gloves. If the pizza don't look like this, a thing of beauty to behold, then make a new one. After all, we want nothing but the best served to our guests. Your reputation, as well as mine, is on the line. And we know about the impeccable reputation of Pasquale, the pizza man. Between us, you and me, we can make every showbiz pizza time pizza a masterpiece for our customers. That's why they come to see us. I would like to argue that no one who's ever gone to Chuck E. Cheese Pizza is going there for top quality pizza. Oh yeah, I was gonna tell you about Calzone. Well, you see, he was a cousin of mine from Venice who started a chain of bowling alleys in Rome and... Oh, never mind. I'll tell you later. So they brought back the shitty Calzone joke? Did they think they needed to, like, keep the audience hanging on a cliffhanger? You're being forced to watch this video by your boss. I think you've got a pretty captive audience. So that's all the training videos I wanted to talk about. Uh, I didn't really know how to end this video, um, but then I did a little bit of research into some of the characters of uh, Chuck E. Cheese itself and learned something that maybe the rest of you know, maybe I'm the last one to know. Because I didn't go to Chuck E. Cheese, I was a homeschool kid. But I learned that Chuck E. Cheese has lore, and my god is it dark. Chuck E. Cheese was an orphan who didn't know his birthday. Chuck grew up in an orphanage called St. Marinara's. He always loved the song Happy Birthday, yet he never heard it sung to himself. However, with so many kids around the orphanage, the little mouse had a lot of opportunities to celebrate with other kids and came to truly love birthday parties. Then he had to grow up and leave the orphanage because adults can't live with kids. We're just gonna gloss over that. More sadness. He moved to New York City to be around a lot of people, but he still felt lonely. Why is it in quotes? Don't invalidate his feelings. He started secretly living in a pizza parlor, but couldn't hide for long. Soon the owner, a man named Pasquale, we have been acquainted, yes, found Chuck E. Cheese and tried to chase him away. Nervous, the mouse began to sing, and lo and behold, his angelic voice blew the owner away. A mouse that can sing. Wait, let me try to do the voice. A mouse that can sing. No, I'm sorry. I can't do the voice. That, that, that's a spicy mouse to meet the ball. <laughs> I'm a gonna make you a star. They changed the name of the restaurant to Chuck E. Cheese's home of the world famous singing mouse. But there was still more sadness to come. Oh, my poor heart. During Chuck's first performance, the audience booed him, but when he finally sang happy birthday to a lone child in the audience, the crowd perked up and the rest is history. So Chuck E. Cheese has had a tragic backstory this whole time. This is the lore that the company itself put out for their children's character. He was an orphan who never knew his birthday, so he overcompensates by putting on birthday parties for other kids every day. Well, now I'm depressed, so I'm gonna end this video. I swear to God, the Bride of Boogity video will be the next one that I make. I, I promise. <laughs> Nothing else will distract me. I hope you guys liked this video. Let me know what you thought. If you have ever worked at Chuck E. Cheese, thank you, and I'm very sorry. And anyone who might have lost their job because of this whole Chuck E. Cheese bankruptcy thing. I'm, I'm genuinely sorry. This year just keeps on being so great. But I hope whoever you are, whatever you're doing, uh, this video made you smile a little bit. Um, thank you to everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing, supporting this channel. It means a lot to me. My name is Avery. I'm a YouTuber if you say so, because thanks to you guys, this is technically a YouTube channel. Bye!